Okay, so here we are, the Tesla Model 3 touchscreen. Essentially, it's a big iPad that replaces all the old controls and dials that you might be used to, as well as controlling a lot of the functionality that's available within the car. So given its importance, it's a good job that Tesla have produced such great instructional videos for you to familiarize yourself with the touchscreen before you actually get in the car. I am, of course, joking. Tesla's videos are rubbish. They are rubbish. Now, you could read the instruction manual, but it's 2020. Who wants to read a manual? I want my instructions delivered to me in some digestible format via a medium like YouTube. So that's why I've decided to venture inside the touchscreen to give you an overview of the fundamentals. Now, I'm not going to go into loads of detail on this stuff, and I do recommend that you sit down in the car and press around on all the buttons to your heart's content. That's the best way you'll learn. But hopefully the stuff I'm going to go over will give you a good basic understanding and a place to start. If you're finding these videos helpful, it would be really appreciated if you drop a like on the video below. And if you'd like to stay up to date with the latest videos I produce, please also hit the subscribe button. All good? Yeah, roll the uh, music bit. Okay, so the touchscreen is split into three main sections. On the right hand side, you've got your primary driving information. Along the bottom, you've got your taskbar with various commands on. And then the larger section on the left generally will display your navigation, but obviously it changes depending on what you're selecting and what menu you're in. We'll start with the right hand side. Um, at the moment, I'm in park. So you can see just from that P that uh, the gear we're in is park. Um, the red little sign at the top is that I haven't got my seatbelt on, so I'm just going to put that on just because we'll go through a few, few of the different modes. Um, on the right hand side here, you've got the battery level. Um, you can click this to go into your charging screen. There are a number of different ways to get to this charging screen, um, so we'll go through that when we get to it a little bit later. You've then got the commands to open the front and the boot, as well as the charging port. The charging port is the only one that you can open from the car and then close again. The other two obviously don't close, you have to actually get out and, and close them. On the left hand side you've got the name of the vehicle and on the right hand side it will be the speed limit of the street or road that you're currently on. These three sections down here we've got the rear view camera and in fact you can also see the two side cameras. Um, again, charging shows exactly the same menu as before. And on the right hand side, you've got the microphone, which will let you input a voice command. Now, I would never actually use that button because you've got a button on the steering wheel. The right hand scroll wheel, if you hold that down, you'll also bring up the voice command entry. Below this, you've got the window wipers. As you can see, I've got it set to auto. Um, you can take that off auto if you want, or you can set the speed manually. I'm going to put the car into drive now so that I can show you a few of the additional features. So by holding down the brake pedal, I have pinch drive enabled um, just because I think it's a little safer if someone does get hold of your phone or if someone can triangulate the signal from your phone, they can obviously get into your car um, using, using that. You'll notice now that with drive enabled, we've got a few more options that have popped up. We now have a speedometer at the top of the screen and the gear selection has moved to the left-hand side. And we can move the car into reverse, which will automatically show the rear camera, or into drive. And you'll see at the top here that the, the relevant gears are showing us selected. Okay, so the three little dots down here actually signify that we are in the center option of three. So we can swipe either way. This side will bring up a list of how many miles you've done, um, since your last charge and how long it's been. Obviously, I've just charged this, so there's not much to see there. Um, there are various ways within here that you can see energy consumption stats, but they're not particularly insightful. Um, there are a number of third-party apps that do a much better job, and I'll perhaps delve deeper into those in, a, in another video. Swiping the other way, we get to see tyre pressure now. Because the car, car's been sitting here cold, it doesn't show that immediately you have to drive for a couple of miles and then your tire pressures will, will show up there. Okay, so moving on to the larger section of the screen, pretty much everything at the top there you can touch. So we'll start with the lock symbol. That just locks the doors. You get a nice little chime. 
um, time. If you click that, it goes to your calendar if you've got it connected to your phone, which currently I do not have. Uh, temperature next, and then the Tesla logo. If you click on this, you'll get your car information up along with your VIN, your latest software release, and again, the car name. This is where you can change your car name. If you click on this, you can type in a new name for the vehicle if you'd like to. Uh, next one where you've got your name, this is your driver profile. So you can click onto this. If you've got multiple people that drive the car, you may want to set up different profiles for each person. Now, a profile will save any of the settings that you change, whether that's where the steering wheel is, how the seats are set up. You'll see as we go through some of these options, if you look up here, it will say saved every time. It's, it auto saves any changes that you make. You can also select here valet mode. So if you drop your car off at an airport um, and they're gonna park it for you, you might wanna put that on just because it stops them going into any detailed options. It limits things like the, uh, the acceleration. It just gives you a bit of peace of mind um, that no one's gonna be messing around with your car um, also on here, we've got driver profile settings. So if you need to add a new driver, this is where you would do it uh, to create a new profile. Now to the left here, you can see this little clock. This is because I've got an update to install. So a lot of the time you won't see anything here. When there is an update ready to download, it will be a yellow down pointing arrow. And when that update is downloading, I think the arrow turns green. This is signify that it wants me to schedule when to install this update. Um, I'll sort that out later. The next one along that looks like a little sun, this is your sentry mode. So at the moment it's off. If I click on it, we get the little red dot in the middle to say that sentry mode is, is on. The next one up is the little dash cam signal. And again, I can click on this. It will give me these two options of saving footage. So if I want to save the last 10 minutes of footage from the dash cam, I can click on that and it will commit it to the memory card. Otherwise I can use the launch viewer to view the last 10 minutes of footage. And obviously I've been sitting in the car so there's not too much going on at the moment. The next one is your 4G or Wi-Fi signal. Um, so if we click on this, we can see that at the moment I'm connected to 4G with a very weak signal. I do have this connecting to our home Wi-Fi, but where we are currently, there's a very weak signal. So it kind of flips between the 4G access and the Wi-Fi. Now, if I click on Wi-Fi settings, this is where you can add a new Wi-Fi network. You can also connect to your phone if you set your phone up as a hotspot. Um, so if you didn't have a good 4G access in the car and you wanted to use your phone instead, you can easily do that. Then you've got the Bluetooth menu at the top here again. I'm connected to my phone. You've got various options, whether or not you want to sync contacts and calls, sync messages, and whether you want to tell it to chime on a new message. And then finally, telling me whether or not the passenger airbag is switched on. Now, the largest part of the screen by default will be set as your navigation panel. Um, by clicking on this, you'll notice a few other options appear on the left-hand side, um, a zoom in and a zoom out. Why you ever use those, I don't know, because you can very easily pinch and twist as you, as you want to. Uh, the compass at the top will flip between either the relative way your car is facing, or if you press it again, it'll show that north is up. I, I do prefer to have it pointing like this when, when I'm on navigation. Uh, the three sections down here, firstly, this will give you more of a Google Earth kind of view. The second one, will show current traffic levels. So very much like Google Maps, where it has red or yellow on the roads to show there's some sort of delay. That's what this will do. And then at the bottom, this will show you all the closest superchargers. Now you can see here, it can filter between superchargers, which I've got it just filtered to at the moment, but you can also include slightly slower chargers and then the very sort of slow ones. Um, it doesn't have every kind of charger on here. Um, I would recommend using something like ZapMap to really see all the charging locations, um, but it's not bad, especially for superchargers. It's quite good because you can click into them and you can see, for example, how many stalls are used at the moment, what the services are. It, it gives you quite a good lot of information. The navigation itself works basically as you'd expect. You type in a postcode and address, or you can do a search or select the location you've previously been to 
it will tell you what your battery will be when you get there. Um, it will also give you obviously the distance, the time. You can get you can go into settings from here. Um, we'll go through these settings when we get to them on the main menu um, because again this is another option that can be accessed elsewhere. So moving on to the bottom taskbar in the screen, you've firstly got the speakers. Now this is another command that can be done very easily on the steering wheel by using the left scroll wheel. So to be honest, I've, I've never really used the speakers button there. Next up, you have the heating for your rear windscreen and front windscreen. This has a number of options. I think the rear one just has a single option. It's either on or off. The front one has a standard blow level and then a much more powerful high level. Next along, we have the seat heating. So for each of these, we can just select three levels of seats for either side. So in the center here, we have the climate controls. The aircon can be switched on and off just by holding this down. You'll notice it changed color slightly, gets slightly brighter. And I hold it again, switch off. You can also switch it on and bring up the controls by tapping it. On the right hand side here, you can toggle on auto or manual AC. Once it's on manual, obviously you can adjust the level of fan. You can also change the direction by just dragging here, which to be honest is one of the coolest things in the car. You can also use these buttons on the right hand side for additional higher and lower aircon. And the button on the left decides whether or not the aircon gets through to the back seats or not. You can also control the heated seats to a greater extent from this menu here. And here you can control the back ones, various levels, or we'll switch everything off completely. Finally, top left, this controls what happens when you leave the car. At the moment, I've got it switched off. You can set it to be left on. And it says here that it will turn off when the battery level reaches 20%. There is a dog mode, so if you want to leave your dog in the car. There's also camping mode, which basically does a very similar thing. It lets the AC stay on while you're in the car until the battery gets down to 20%. Okay, so moving to this little quick menu here. This will bring up a host of options. Firstly, you've got call. This will connect to your mobile phone, showing you recent calls, um, as well as you know your dialer, your contacts, if you've got it all linked in. Secondly, calendar that we saw earlier when you click on the clock. I don't have that clicked in yet, but it will link to your phone if you do. Next one up, camera. It's exactly the same as clicking this button here. Next one, energy consumption. So again, this is one of those menus that will give you various stats around your energy consumption over the last five, 15, 30 miles. It will give you an estimated average range. And it will also, if you plan a trip, it will work out what your energy consumption is along the route. Again, I'll probably do a more in-depth video on things like energy consumption because I don't think the Tesla itself is the best way to, to look at that. There are a lot of third party apps that, that cover it in a much more comprehensive manner. Next up, charging. So we've seen this menu come up a number of times already. Um, and effectively you can do a number of different things on it. So it'll show you the current charge level. You can set your limit for what you want it to charge up to. I think at the moment, for some reason, I've got this charged to 90%. Generally, I'd probably have it 80%. Really, Tesla recommend that you only go fully to 100% if you're doing an extremely long trip. You can set your charge current, and you can also schedule departure. So if you want to either start charging at a certain time, if you're on a certain energy tariff where you get cheaper energy throughout the night, you may want to use the scheduled charging. Um, or if you know that you're leaving at a certain time, you can either say, I want to start charging at 5 a.m. because I know I'm leaving at 8, or you can use the depart at and say, I'm going to leave at 8 o'clock. You can set whether it's all week, weekdays, um, and whether or not you want to precondition the cabin. It will also show you your latest supercharge. Now you can get much more details on, the, on your supercharging and a full account of it all from your Tesla account online.
Okay, so next up, web. It's basically just an internet browser. There we go. Entertainment. Okay, this is where things get a little bit more fun. Um, so you've got the two options, arcade and theatre. Arcade has a number of games. I'm not going to go into them in this video. Um, you can connect game controllers, PlayStation and Xbox, I think both um, you can connect. You can also use the steering wheel for certain games. So the one you've probably seen already is Beach Buggy Racing. This uses the steering wheel and the brake pedal to control the car as you're driving. Um, but I'll perhaps do another video on some of these games more in depth. I mean, some of these games like Cuphead, it, that's quite a critically acclaimed sort of indie game that is available on consoles. Um, so we've got full games here, not just kind of mess around stuff. Theatre, this is where you have Netflix, YouTube, gives you Twitch and the Tesla tutorials. Now, if you are living in 2008 in the US, you may want to check out those Tesla tutorials because they will be bang up to date. Otherwise, probably give them a miss and watch things like this on YouTube. And finally, Toy Box. This was previously called Easter Eggs. It's got everything on here from yeah, a whoopee cushion. And you can choose which area of the car you want to have that in. Tracks, which is kind of like a garage band in the Tesla. Uh, romance, this displays a fire on the screen. Um, it actually switches on all the heaters and it does a surprisingly good job of convincing you that you do have an open fire in front of you. And then when you click the screen, it puts on some uh, Barry White sort of music if you want to get cozy. Sketchpad, little drawing app. Um, you can, I think, share your creations with Elon Musk by pressing the publish button on there. And then Mars transforms your map to the surface of Mars because Elon Musk is into all that. Santa mode. Yeah, if you want to get in the holiday mode or the Christmas mode, then by all means put that on. It jingles when you drive. And Rainbow Road, this is always switched on. What you need to do is when you're driving, if you have auto steer switched on, if you pull the gear stick down four times, it will turn the road on your navigation screen to a rainbow road and it'll play this weird cowbell song that's, that's pretty annoying to be honest but there you go it's a little fun thing okay next up we have the music this will open into spotify into your latest listening off of so i have my spotify account linked to this so, so it's got the albums that i've got saved it's also got all your general spotify menus that you would have um, you can also cycle through radio which is just your standard radio phone you can connect to your phone if you use something other than spotify car karaoke i've not actually used this i assume it's spotify where you can sing along tune in radio which is just a dab radio settings this will give you your audio settings so you can adjust the tone of your bass, mid and treble on here. You can set the balance in the car, whether or not you want to have this more in the front or just for the back. And on the options you can set to have immersive sound, the various level of that. And you can also allow mobile control so that people with the app in the back could control the music if they wanted to. Uh, any music here just gives you the ability to search all of the music on there, so whether it's Spotify, whether it's on your phone, podcasts, this will all come through on the on the overall search. One other thing to note on here is that you can show this at various levels, so you can either have it fully up, you can have it halfway down, or down to the bottom, or hidden completely. Now, when you're driving, you may not want to be doing that. Um, one little shortcut is that if you have it like this for example you can just press the music button to take that fully up or fully down okay so finally we have the car icon this brings up the rest of the options for the car so quick controls to start with this is things that tesla think that you will want to access quickly 
lights. I leave on auto all the time. You can set, set that differently if you'd like to. You can adjust your mirrors and your steering wheel um, using the scroll wheels on the steering wheel and whatever changes you make will be saved to your profile. You can fold the mirrors here and you can also lock the windows. Normally I would have display brightness set to auto but because of the video I've, I've put it up to 100%. Next up, lights. So again, we've already seen the lights auto section. Dome lights are the lights up at the top um, above your rear view mirror. Ambient lights, whether or not you have those switched on, these are lights in the uh, footwells. Um, auto high beam, this switches the high beam on if it's dark and it thinks there is nothing in front of you that will be blinded by it and it will dip the beam if it senses that something is oncoming. Headlights after exit, whether or not you want to leave your headlights on for a set period of time after you exit the car. And steering wheel lights, these are just the small lights next to the scroll wheels on the steering wheel. I think they look quite cool. Lock, so this firstly shows you your keys. So I've got obviously my phone and my two key cards. You can add a new key if you want to add someone else's phone or if you have the key fob or if you need to add a new key card. Again, we have the window lock and the child locks here. The setting whether or not to have your walk away door lock switched on. I always have this switched on. So basically when you walk away from the car, it, it locks it for you. And it will also unlock the doors when you put the car into park. Car left open notifications. I think this is a new update quite recently. Um, so you'll now get a notification on your phone if your doors and windows are left open when you've left the car. You can set this to have a lock confirmation sound. So when you walk away from the car so that you know it's locked, you can set the car to the car horn to, to beep. I mean, I have the mirrors folding in anyway when it, when it locks. So I generally use that as a, as a gauge to make sure it's locked. Um, and close windows on lock. I mean, I'd probably ensure they were closed anyway, but you can switch that on if you want to. Display mode. So this is basically what you're seeing now is the day mode. Night mode, it will automatically switch to, and it just allows for less glare um, when it's dark outside. I've left it on auto. Screen clean mode is quite useful. If you want to clean the screen, but you don't want to press all the buttons, you put this in. And we can then like wipe the screen. And then you actually have to hold this button down to exit for three seconds and then you're back out again. Language and region settings, time format, whether you want 12 or 24 hour. Energy display, so this will display either percentage for your battery or miles or kilometers, depending on what you've got set. It will also, on your charge screen, when you're charging, it will show either miles per hour that it's charging or kilowatt hours, depending on which of these settings you have. Temperature, Celsius or Fahrenheit, and the setting for your tire pressure, whether you want to show bar or PSI. Driving, acceleration, you can put it into chill. Obviously this will save on your battery, um, but let's be honest, no one's bought a Tesla to put it in chill mode for acceleration. Steering mode, the further to the right you go here, the stiffer the steering will be. Uh, standard, I find perfectly fine. Regen braking, low or standard. Effectively, this will dictate how much the regen braking will kick in when you take your foot off the accelerator. Now, if you're struggling to get used to that, you may want to put it down to low, um, but standard obviously will save your battery the most. Same with stopping mode, you can put it on creep or roll um, if you're struggling to get used to how the regen braking and stopping mode works in the Tesla. Um, hold is the one that will maximize the regen um, and obviously then maximize your battery. Um, but if you wanted to get used to it a little bit slower, then you could put in creep or roll mode. Slip start at the bottom here. It's just really to help your vehicle get out if you're stuck in like sand or, or snow. Okay, next up, autopilot. So I don't have full self-drive on this car, um, but all the Teslas come with autopilot as standard. 
So you can select your cruise distance. This is how closely you will follow a car when you have your autopilot engaged. Um, this is very easily adjustable when you're driving as well, using the wheel. Um, you can click the right wheel, left or right, to adjust that distance up or down. Auto steer and the full self-driving visualization preview. Basically, you can use auto steer if you've got that switched on. And the full self-driving visualization preview shows you things like traffic lights now that it didn't used to show you before. Speed limit warning is just the type of warning you'd like when you're going over the speed limit. The speed limit section here you can set to relative to the current speed limit or an absolute speed limit. If it's relative and then you set the auto steer to, I don't know, 70 miles an hour and had it on plus three, the car would comfortably go up to 73 miles an hour. Forward collision warning, this is how early you'd like a warning when the Tesla thinks there is a forward collision coming. And lane departure avoidance, this will pull you back into lane if you change lanes without indicating. Also down here we've got the emergency lane departure avoidance which again will do a similar sort of thing to ensure that you don't drift out of lane. Blind spot collision warning, if when you're changing lanes there is something in your blind spot you'll get a warning chime, automatic emergency braking on or off and obstacle aware acceleration so this will automatically limit acceleration and may apply the brakes if any obstacle is detected in front of your vehicle while driving at low speeds. Navigation menu, this is one we saw earlier that you can get to when you input a navigation location. At the top here, you've got the volume of the voice commands, whether or not you want those on or off at all. Automatic navigation will automatically navigate to home or work or whatever's in your calendar. I mean, obviously, if you've not got your calendar linked, it doesn't really make a difference. Trip planner. Trip planner, basically, that will include supercharger stops on your navigation if it thinks that you need to stop to fill up your battery. And online routing, that will reroute you if it thinks you can save more than the specified time here. Uh, you've also got an option to avoid ferries, avoid tolls. Okay, safety and security. You can power off the screen if you want to. You can switch on a speed limit mode, which will physically stop the car going above the limit that you specify. Centre mode, you can switch on and off from here, and you can exclude home, work, or your favourite places. Dash cam, you can set it to save clips when you beep the horn. And you can also switch on your passenger front airbag from here. Park assist chimes, this will chime when you are close to hitting something when parking. Joe mode, I have this switched on, so this actually limits the level of the chimes or, or how loud how loud they are security alarm switched on tilt intrusion will sound the alarm if it senses the car has been tilted or if there is an intrusion and pin to drive this will ask you to input a pin before it lets you drive the car cabin overheat protection this will stop the cabin inside getting too hot you can set this to off completely that will obviously save the most battery no ac will just put the blowers on to keep the keep the heat down but it can go over a certain temperature or it will use the AC if it really needs to. Let's be honest, in the UK it's not going to be too much of a problem. Down at the bottom allow mobile access, whether or not you can use a mobile phone to get in and allow, allow keyless driving. The data sharing is basically whether or not you agree to send Tesla your footage from sentry mode and from dash cam. Okay, service. So I'm not going to go through this in too much detail because most of this stuff you're never going to need to use. Wiper service mode, um, if you need to change your wipers, it just basically pulls them up slightly. You can view your owner's manual fully here if you want to read it while you're in the car, I guess. Um, adjust headlights. Uh, this will recenter your headlights and let you change them, change the left and right headlights um, using the wheel on the car. Um, Again, this is something that it says should really only be done by Tesla technicians. Towing will just show you the right and wrong way if your car needs to be towed. 
Um, reset your tyre pressure sensors if you change your tyres and you, you may need to use that but again probably not. Uh, wheel configuration you can set which wheels you have just because this will affect um, the estimated range of the car. Notifications will show you a list of all your past notifications. Camera calibration really again should only be done if you've had work done on the car so if there's been a windshield or camera replacement then this will need to be done otherwise you can kind of ignore it and factory reset will reset all the settings in the car back to how they were when you first picked it up finally software and um, this is almost the same screen as when you hit the tesla t at the top there it gives you all the same information um, it tells you your autopilot and your premium connectivity dates so premium connectivity with the long range and performance models you get this for a year included um, it's effectively the 4g access for your car down here you can see we've already been over this i've got the software update available um, so i can click to install that now or schedule it for later and software update preference standard or advanced advanced will essentially just push out the new updates as soon as they're available for your model Oh, and finally, glove box. Press it to open the glove box. Brilliant. Again, I use the voice commands normally for glove box just because it's a lot easier than messing around on the screen. Bit of a long one, that, wasn't it? Fair play if you made it all the way through. Give me a shout in the comments if you have. Hopefully, you did find it helpful and I've managed to cover at least most of the basics. If you've got any comments or questions, please put them down below. I'll get back to all of them. And if you are thinking of buying a Tesla, please do not forget to use a referral code when you do so, like I did. This will give you an extra thousand supercharger miles and it will do the same for the person whose code you are using. Mine is down below, just in case you fancy chucking them my way. Thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you later. Uh, how do I actually get out of this thing?